Wars in the console wars. We don't like the cars, but we sure hate yours. It's Xbox One versus PS4. Look the bodies in the floor. Cap, the fanboys are upset. They've stopped shoveling money into the console. I'm sick of this shit. My mom's not made of money, you know. God, shit, fuck, damn it! Give him Destiny 2! Give him anything! Give him another Halo game! Who gives a shit? But, Captain, it's not ready. They can't tell the difference! Let's throw down, come at me, bro. I want you up and your bombs up. Just for show. No, no, no! Let me stay! No! Uh. I only take 720 peas. It's okay, but... <laughs> oh gosh, this needs a patch if I ever tasted blood. When did our fanboys become so cynical and hard to please? Welcome, everybody, to episode 24 of the Pseudo Nerd Podcast for June 17th, 2016. I'm your podcast host, Josh Kaiser, and joining me in the virtual reality today, Josh, I never play uh, computer games on settings lower than minimum, Haddix. Uh, hello, everybody. That was a long intro. And Kyle, I'll just buy a new computer if uh, my computer doesn't support the current game, hopefully. Sort of true. I think the Those one I have is going to last me for a little while. But, uh, nah, yeah, I'm kind of an impulse shopper. That is definitely true. Uh, that is true. And coming up in today's podcast, we're going to talk about all the impulse purchases Hoagie's going to make in the future uh, as we kind of review E3 conference, which occurred this week, and talk about what Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo – are doing as well as some of the other game developers and what what's coming up on the horizon, what we're excited about, what we're not excited about, and what Haddix uh, probably will never play. Yeah, there's a good chance I don't play any of the games. Do you have any console right now? Like, at your place right now, do no. you have anything? Nope. Not even like a, like a Nintendo I mean, I have a PS. I have a PS2 in a closet somewhere. But, oh, I mean, I guess old. I have a... Um, I have a Dreamcast in the attic as well. I mean, that might as well just stay there. For the I, have a, I have a Dreamcast, and the guy that I used to work with, uh, I, where I co-opted in, in college, uh, you know how you could boot. Well, you could boot like a lot of them, but uh, not you that could we like them. And like, you know, well, he he like gave me a bootlegged um, or or Dreamcast with a chip, and I don't know what the hell you do. Something where you could play burned games on it. And so then he gave me that and like a CD book full of Dreamcast games. Just random games. Man, you, you hit the mother load then. Dude. I mean, man, every, oh. everyone probably wanted a souped up Dreamcast. Probably, probably have every Dreamcast that is game. The That's dream. how few they made. Amen, brother. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> no I did enjoy the Dreamcast though. I, I liked it. Oh, unfortunately, you're going to be heartbroken to find out that Sega did not uh, uh, have their own uh, conference uh, here. No, they that's they what's did wrong. not display. So. That's why I don't buy any uh, consoles. Yeah, ever since hurt. Sega went belly up, right? <laughs> yeah. What, 10 years ago? At least. He's waiting, for, he's waiting for the D2 to come out. Once that Dreamcast 2 comes out, the he's Mighty back Ducks. on it. D2. Nice. Nice. Uh, also, while we're recording tonight, the Cleveland Cavaliers, Golden State Warriors, Game 6 is on. Uh, so we will probably be watching that while we record. And I just got to say, great predictions all around, gentlemen. Uh, Cavs in 6, Warriors in 5, none of which are happening. So nice work. Yeah, but at, at least uh, you and I were rooting for the Cavs, unlike some jabroni. This is true. This is true. This I, was using, I was using my brain, not my heart. Well, apparently that didn't go very well for you, did it? It did not. <laughs> But it so was who's, there. I mean, so the, who's the, more the correct? Have what happened? If if Golden State wins in six, 
I think I win by default because both of you guys think the, thought the Cavs are going to win anyways. Yeah, but we picked what? the right amount of games. Yeah. So you're going to do like closest without going over? Are we going prices right rules? No, I'm just saying like at this point, I'd rather just be wrong completely and have Cavs in seven. That would be a ideal well, situation yeah. for me. Yeah, yeah, I'll go with that. If it's if it's Warriors in six, I just don't want I don't want the Warriors to win on our court again. That's not that's not fun for anybody. I, I think if I think the the blow of losing if we lost Game Seven, I think it wouldn't be as bad with this like little comeback that we've had. Like if we tied up three three and we go to Oakland and put up a good fight. And but lose it, it'll suck. It's gonna, but hurt. it won't be as bad. <laughs> it'll hurt real bad. <laughs> I mean, it, but not as like if we'd have lost. It would have uh, been as, yeah. If we would have lost uh, game four five. to one, it would have been yeah. just embarrassing. There's gonna be yeah, too exactly. many people that are gonna sit there and be like, we were one game away from a title, yeah. regardless. Even I, even if we were down three one. Yeah, Lo- losing sucks in general. But if you win one game and you get blown out three of the other, like that's just embarrassing. Like at that point you're doubting everything. But at least if we get to game seven and lose, it's like, oh, well, you know what? Maybe next year, you know, <laughs> good old as, Cleveland, right? As much as Cleveland has lost in its history, it it never gets old for mm-hmm. sure. And what else uh, doesn't get old is the uh, council wars as they continue to move forward with new ideas and new concepts. Right? No. Yeah, yeah. See, I, I don't think. See, I don't think it's a segue unless you can continue without on that. You had to, you you basically said something and then waited for us. I mean, I so always say can, something, but when I don't feel good about it, I wait for some recognition. No, I, I think the I think the console wars at this point is. I don't think I don't think Nintendo cares to be in it. Uh, like I don't think they're. trying I don't think to. Nintendo is in it. I think Nintendo is trying to be their own niche. Their own they niche are. business. Um, and we'll get to. Well, screw it. Let's just talk about Nintendo first, I guess, since we, we brought them up. Uh, it really doesn't matter the order. Well, I think they're the quickest two to talk about, especially with what they showcased. So, yeah, I mean, let's – I was – we were having a quick discussion before the, the podcast started. I was, you know, I didn't watch E3 Live or anything like that. You know, I had things going on. I've been catching up on some articles and YouTube videos, things like that. And I kept searching high and low, high and low for Nintendo. And I'm like, what did they uh, demo or display at E3 outside of, like, Pokemon and Zelda? And, uh, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Kyle, you're, you're kind of the Nintendo guy here. But that was majority of their E3 sh- conference, right? I mean, I think that there might have been a couple other – I mean, a couple announcements. I think Paper Mario was mentioned um, as far as like the Wii U, uh, there wasn't a lot of Wii U talk. There was a lot of 3DS talk, and that's usually what it is, and that's what Nintendo makes a lot more of their money on is the, the 3DS sales. Um, but yeah, it, I think the um, the finally releasing a uh, a new Zelda game when we haven't seen one since 2011. So I mean, we're talking five years now more because it's I mean it's not going to be released this year. I was going to say, did they give us a release date on that? Um, I'd like to think that it would probably be released around the time the NX comes out, and then they would just they would just release it for both systems at the same time. Uh, I mean, it, I guess it's possible that they would just they could release one for the Wii U, and then when the NX comes out, they would just do a re-release. But um, I don't know. I, I guess I mean they've done it before, where they've released a, a Zelda game and then. Like a Sky or not Skyward Sword, um, Twilight Princess, uh, for the GameCube, and, and then, then brought it later out on Wii for the Wii. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I don't know. If, I don't don't remember if they gave a release date on that. But I if I were to a, guess, I it probably would be look. this year. It says 2017. Um, right, and like, so and the NX is uh, too. It looks so. like spring of 2017. For what I that's thought, I say. thought I was reading that Zelda will be the first game released on NX when it comes out. It could be that that could be like, like, at the bu- like it'll kind of roll bundle. out together, like yeah. their launch title for it. And yeah, that's exactly. the other thing. So NX obviously is the next. Well, from what I'm reading, they're not even necessarily calling it the next generation for the Nintendo console. Yeah, they're like saying a it's idea. another way, another way to play games. So with with Sony's take on virtual reality, kind of you know, which we'll get to shortly. I wonder if 
this NX is going to be a virtual reality sort of feel to it as well. I kind of hope not. I feel like when you already have three, just like anything else, like you have three companies doing the same, kind of doing the same thing. I hope Nintendo's doing their own thing that still gives people a reason to choose between either an Xbox or a PlayStation and then on the side, you know, grabbing like the you know, I mean, Nintendo what, product. What do you do? Like what, what else, what else is there? I mean, there's already the, not necessarily the virtual reality, but like the, you know, when the Wii came out with the, the, you know, the movement capabilities or whatever. I mean, other than VR, I, well, what know, else I is mean, there? If there's if there's someone that'll figure that out, it's Nintendo. They are definitely true. They think outside the box, um, and they outside I mean, the it, GameCube to their nice. I like <laughs> it. Um, they even admitted to them admitted openly like they're not worried about frames per second, what kind of processing power it has, what kind of graphics card it is. So they're always doing their own thing. Separate to your point, Kyle, they're kind of like, you know, you pick a P, you know, if you're a Sony fan, you're a Microsoft fan, you kind of pick your console there. And then like Nintendo's almost like, instead of getting a, a PS4 and an Xbox One, you can get one of those and then a Nintendo whatever on the side because it's a different experience. Yeah, I agree. I'm just kind of curious with now that they've, you know, We've been told about the NX for quite a while now. I mean, in, in comparison to, you know, not to not to jump too ahead with our podcast, but with you know Microsoft and Sony also announcing new consoles coming up, um, there's been more information kind of shared with that than with like, NX was really just like an afterthought. It was it was mentioned that it's real, but I'm very surprised that with how long the rumors and the discussions and the and the kind of the announcement of the NX has been that we still know absolutely nothing about this this whatever this is product console whatever um so it's uh it's shrouded in mystery i i'm okay with that i just thought that at e3 and i i highly doubt that it's going to be released after the next e3 that they didn't uh at least talk a little bit more about the hardware um just considering that two two and a half days was basically just zelda I feel like you have to be careful with that kind of stuff, though, because, I mean, you mention it, and if it doesn't come out in the next year, I mean, people go nuts. You know well, that's I mean? why you people don't go, give release well, dates. No, and you don't, yeah, you don't say release date, or you say, like, it's it's still on the horizon, but yeah, but I mean, what, what, if they bring up, bit. if they talked about NX this year, and we get to E3 next year, and it's still not out yet, are people... No, you're not what expecting you it to talk be out about next, next year. year. You're, you're expecting it to have a lot more conversation. You're expecting next one to be like, here's the details. You know, we're planning on releasing it in 2018, whatever the case may be. Like, they have a much firmer grasp. So I think maybe they don't feel good about release dates or what they're doing just yet. So they're holding off. Yeah. But to, to Kyle's point, they admitted Zelda is going to be, you know, released for it. it could be the, the launch game for it. So. It can't be too far out. It, I would say it, the latest would be before E3 of next year. That's what I would, if I were to guess, it'd be before the summer of, of next year. Um, and really, I mean, E3 has been, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll skip the discussion. That'll be something towards the end to give like my overall thoughts on just E3 in general. But, uh, it's, uh, I'm excited. I mean, Zelda's my, uh, by far my favorite franchise. Well, let's games. let's just move into it because I mean that's basically what Nintendo Nintendo spent forty minutes on Pokemon, uh, and then spent basically everything else on Zelda. And we haven't had a Zelda in five years. They're calling it Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, which I kind of absolutely hate the name. Uh, but Kyle, why don't <laughs> why don't you go into into what you, your feelings are because you are the Zelda nut. So from from a story standpoint, a lot of a lot of people are kind of cluing in that this takes place kind of close to the timeline of the first game, so the the first Nintendo Zelda. Um, and once again, I'm not I can't remember. I used to have the timeline memorized, but uh, I know that's obviously after Skyward Sword and a couple others. Um, but uh, the thing that's really different about it is that the standard Zelda game for those who've never played a Zelda before, um. It involves a lot of, you know, you, it's very linear. You start in one place, 
you get an item, you use that item to help get yourself through a dungeon. The, then you get an item in that dungeon, which then will help you go to the next dungeon and take care of that dungeon. And you just kind of keep going forward and forward and forward with it until you've kind of beat the game with all the items that you could pick up. Um, this game looks very open worldy, looks kind of like a, like if Skyrim were a Zelda game. Uh, there's a lot of like survival things involved with, with it where you make food and like you put on different clothing when it's cold and hot outside. And, you know, depending on what you're wearing, it'll affect, you know, how much you, you know, how much you can move and how, uh, just kind of like how your health is. You can climb up basically anything as long as you have like the strength and stamina to climb like the mountain or a wall. Um, it just seems like you don't have to go anywhere. You just kind of find your own adventure in the game. So, I mean, so far I haven't, we haven't really seen like boss fights or really there's, there's places where it looks like you go into dungeons, but it doesn't look like there's like, okay, that's the first dungeon you're supposed to go into. This is the second one. It just seems like you might go into a dungeon where it's really difficult and you can decide whether or not you want to just plow through it or leave and go somewhere else. But it looks like there's nothing gating you from doing basically whatever you want in the game at the start. Yeah, it definitely has a much more exploration feel to it. And it's, I think there's so much going on. I mean, it's one thing, it's just huge, absolutely huge, massive, uh, like land. And that, and that's, you know, got a lot of people excited. But then on top of that, it's, it looks like it's not, it's not linear, which to your point is, was, you know, one of the things Zelda was always, well, not always, but for the most part, fairly linear game. And, uh, it's interesting. It's, it's a different take on, on, on Zelda and, uh, kind of excited for it. And I know like the diehards are really excited for it. And there's a lot of environment aspects to it. And I mean, they, it could be one of those it could easily be game of the year, game of the decade, you know, knowing Nintendo, they, you know, they, what they do is they make the best of the best, but, um, at the it's end very the- possible just because it's, it's unlike any other Zelda game, and that's what's going to make it really push for being. A, it's either going to be game of the game of the decade, or it's just going to be shuffled into obscurity because it was just so different. It just almost kind of turned people off. But from the initial responses from the people at E3, they can't wait for the game to come out. Right, and I mean, if it, if this game bombed, that would be bad for Nintendo because they basically just spent this entire E3 conference talking about Zelda. And if that's if that's like ninety percent of your focus, and then the game sucks, like that's that's not good on a on a on a, a company that already has struggled with their consoles. Let's be honest, the Wii U has not done nor performed the way they would have liked it to. And once again, that big reason is because the the game lineup it's been taking way too long to develop a true reason to get the game. I mean, yeah, you're going to have your Mario's, you're going to have, but it, it's I feel like. If they would have come out with a Zelda earlier, I think more people would get the Wii U. The, the Wii U and or just Nintendo products in general are always, they are the quintessential reason of like, okay, this is when I'm going to get this, this console. When people are a fan of PlayStation and Xbox, they almost get them pretty quickly and then just kind of get the game that comes out with it, whether it's like a Call of Duty or Halo or, you know, uh, Last of Us or something like that. One of their exclusives. And, but they get it pretty quickly. A lot of people who get like a Wii U, they'll look and say like, well, I don't really give a shit about like the next Mario game. But then when like when Mario Kart comes out or when like Xenoblade comes out or, you know, you know what I mean? Like, or Smash Brothers comes out. That's when somebody goes, all right, now's the time to get a Wii U. It's, it's almost more strategic when someone decides to get a Nintendo product. Right. Um, so I don't, is there anything else, Kyle, you want to talk about Zelda on that, that we haven't discussed with it or no? Uh, no, not really. Okay. Um, the other two probably big names we kind of briefed on them was Pokemon Sun and Moon, uh, and then the Paper Mario Color Splash. And, you know, Paper Mario Color Splash, Color Splash just looks like a new Paper Mario game. Like, it'd be fun. It's not going to make me go out and buy, you know, a Wii U or an NX or anything like that. But it's a game we, we, we have played the other Paper Marios before. Yeah, no, I mean, if if I own the system, I would definitely get it and play it for sure. Uh, but it's not, I'm like, oh, I need to have that or anything like that. Where I think The Legend of Zelda is, could could be that that title. Uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon, uh, I mean, it's the next generation Pokemon game. 
The only thing I'll say that I noticed uh, that could be new for it is it, it allows for a four um, Pokemon battle at once. So you can have four different people battling all at once, which kind of adds a whole new strategy to what was normally a heads up sort of battle system. And, and just not to, not to, uh, I guess, change the subject with, uh, with Pokemon Sun and Moon, but they also announced that the, uh, the Pokemon Go Plus accessory is coming out, uh, in July, which is then telling me that Pokemon Go will be coming out even sooner than that. So we're, it looks like Pokemon Go is going to be coming out within the next month. It must be a Go then, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I'm more excited about Pokemon Go than I am for, um, for Sun and Moon for two reasons. One, it's, it's, it's coming out much sooner. I don't need to get a 3DS to play it. I just need, it's, you know, if anyone's ever played, uh, Ingress, it's basically poke, it's basically Pokemon Ingress version where like you just walk around with your smartphone and you can catch Pokemon and do gym battles and it's, it's a geo location Pokemon game. And, uh, uh, I'm going to be honest, I will be that 31-year-old that probably plays that game. Yeah, I could be the only 31-year-old, I'm sure. That's true. No, I'm, I'm going to see Hoagie battling people on the San Francisco, what is it, the BART line? Yeah. The subway system? They're going to be. They're gonna have like people on YouTube be like, two dorks uh, go head-to-head <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the BART. <laughs> But yeah, I didn't mean to pull away from Sun and Moon. I mean, I mean, to me, it's just, it's just, it's another Pokemon game, which I'm sure a lot of people are excited about. Uh, I do like Pokemon. I do like the normal games. I do feel like they're once again getting kind of repetitive and linear. So it's like, you know, what's the difference in buying every game? Like, you know, playing X and Y or black and white and then playing Sun and Moon. Other than collecting all the Pokemon, I feel like the story and the, the overall goal, kind of like the old Zelda games is very, uh, predictable yeah i i agree with that um before we move on from from nintendo haddix do you, uh, do you have any input you want to say or anything that, that i don't even know discuss? why we're going to haddix i know no, i just I, mean, I feel like out of courtesy he is here so you know we just don't want to completely ignore him i am watching uh the Cavs miss somehow we're up six zero and we've missed like 18 shots so. uh the gold you know it's it's uh almost five minutes through the first quarter, and Golden State hasn't made a single shot, and L- the Cavs luckily, haven't made much either. Like, dude, if the if I'm not, I, I won't even go into it. But no, I, I have uh, it, no it input was on Nintendo. But he's got plenty of input on the Cavs yeah, game. Nintendo so. was basically all about games, and I don't even own uh, any Nintendo console, so I don't have any input. <laughs> Okay, well then we'll move on to another console that you do not have and probably never own, and that's Microsoft. Just keep watching the Cavs game. So we'll just call you when uh, when we got any topic that you might have any input on. Uh, unlike Nintendo, Microsoft, and, and really unlike Sony when we get Sony, Microsoft's main focus was hardware on this one. Uh, of course, they announced the Xbox One Slim, which I feel like is always the next iteration of, like, consoles. They try to make a slimmed-down version that's cheaper and has, like, some different features that's, like, almost like the... It's going to be version. slightly better, though, isn't it? doesn't have a... It, it's, supposed, better... it's supposed to be able to have... A, uh, supposed to be able to support 4K, yeah, yeah. Uh, HDR. It's almost like... Consider it like the iPhone, like, the, you know, like the iPhone 6S instead yeah. of the iPhone 6. Uh, well, okay, so, that, so there you go. Um... It's only, I think it's what two ninety nine. Is that the the cost on it? I think that's the. It starts at two ninety nine, which yeah. I think I'll would be three, like, the, like like the five hundred megabyte or the one terabyte version. Five hundred megabytes. Oh wow. Yeah, I think I think the two the two terabyte one is. Uh, you mean gigabytes? No, no, five hundred megabytes. Or then there's a one terabyte and a two terabyte. Are you talking about like RAM or something? No, I'm talking about storage. Really? Like Isn't that usually megabytes? Yeah, what, isn't it gigabyte? I'm pretty sure he, you mean gigabytes, Kyle. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. This guy said no megabytes. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know how 500, much. 500 gig, one terabyte, or two terabyte. Or two terabyte. Yeah, yeah. I think it's three, what, 350, 400, or something like that. I think it's 299, 399, 499. But yeah. I know, I know well, this. Okay. It starts Regardless. at 299. Yes. So, so there you go. It's an option. Uh, I think if you, I think for me, if I was, 
considering owning an Xbox One and I didn't have one, like this would be the route I would go. Like I wouldn't, oh, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't buy an Xbox at this point. I would just hold off and wait. But, but at the uh, same time, then like then you have Scorpio supposedly coming out next year. Like you're gonna for people who are not you, I don't think that this that you fall in that kind of category of gamer, especially especially for Xbox. But for somebody who right now has an Xbox and who might actually think it's a good reason to go get the uh, the 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 S version, the slim version, but then a, and then a year version. down the, the the year down the road. They're announcing another console, which is supposed to be just like this beefy, you know, like insane console. Like, are they are there going to be people that are going to buy all three of these? Well, I feel like if you're a hardcore gamer, you'll probably wait. But if you're someone who doesn't want to drop six, seven, eight hundred bucks, maybe that's even what more, there's going to be Scorpio's virtual reality be up there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're someone who doesn't want to drop that instantly, and you like, you know what? I'll wait a couple years till it drops. You know, buy an Xbox One, a 500 uh, megabyte one, like Hoagie said. For uh, and you can uh, install Tetris on there. Yeah, exactly. That. <laughs> but you know, you buy that for 2.99. That lasts you for a couple years until maybe the price drops on the uh, Scorpio. But to your point, Hoagie, if you're like a hardcore gamer and you want to play the games as soon as they come out, yeah. Well, what's I'm just. Point? I guess I just look at it as so you have if you don't have one at all. Um, I understand getting the slim. Because it's the price point is going to be very similar to what you could probably get an Xbox right now for. Um, obviously, the old the the original Xbox One is going to drop in price because of the slim coming out. So then, I guess I'm just curious about why. I don't know. I, I just don't understand how so much co- how quickly Microsoft is coming out with a newer console, unless it's just going to be. For a completely different market of people, and I, it's got to be at this point. It's got to have like a seven or eight hundred dollar price, to, probably yeah. seven, six or seven hundred dollars. Yeah. I can't imagine them going any higher than that. Though I don't know the specs they're given. It's almost like you're you're getting your own PC. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, the fact that they say it can do sixty frames per second at four K is is pretty fucking impressive. So so who who does that who does that belong to? This is going to belong to like your Twitch players. This is not going to this is not going to belong to it's your, it's the dad. That's... It's not the general um, population oh, by any means. Yeah, sure. It's, this is not you're like you know you're you know I'm a dad. I'm going to get my son an Xbox. Yeah, no, that's and that's, maybe that's, that's why they're coming out the with the slim. slim. Yeah, yeah. The slims for the casual or you know gamer on a budget. Where the Scorpio is for the diehards who are willing to, you know, drop their entire paycheck on a on a new platform, which is is very different that they're that they're going to come out with a, a what well, I guess would be considered like the premium console because that right now, unless Neo is going to be something close to that in price point and power, then yeah, you are going to start dividing your your fan base to your casual versus like the guy that makes a living maybe streaming and playing on the PlayStation or the Xbox and they want to have that type of performance uh you know to i guess show off you know show off their skills with a better stream right it, it well, it'll be interesting uh we'll see where it goes i think the biggest thing that Xbox brought up is their play anywhere um the ability to have a game now for the Xbox 1 and also being able to play it on your PC, being able to play it on like if you bought a Slim, you bought a Scorpio, like you can play it everywhere. Like it, it's sort of backwards compatibility, but it, but on top of it, like it literally lets you just almost like share a library kind of thing. And I think it it's actually it's something that I think Microsoft's wanted to go to for years. Even when they did like the HD DVDs and stuff, they thought um, the future was was discless media all around. And I think they're trying to head further to that direction. And the Xbox Play Anywhere uh, is very intriguing. I mean, for people that are you know that that ha- you know PC master race type people, and uh, it allows them to sort of play it. You know, they can play on the computer, but then they can also play on their Xbox. And I think it's a it's a unique concept uh, that they're they're doing. And if they were yeah, able I- to, if they were able to actually. Because what I've read so far is that it's only games that Microsoft has their hand in. So it's like something that's actually licensed by Microsoft. They're the ones that actually develop the game. Um, so, you know, the, 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 the multi-platform games like the Assassin's Creed and stuff like that probably will not be something that you'll get 
for play anywhere. Um, it looks like like saved games will transfer. Uh, obviously, I think that if I, if I were playing on PC and you were playing, uh, like if I was playing Halo on PC and you were playing Halo on your Xbox One, I don't think that cross platform. Yeah, it, play. Does, it does. It does. I they, did they read were, that. It okay. is. Um, it does allow cross platform uh, co op. See, the thing is, I, there must be some. Uh, it must be certain games though, because especially for first person shooters, I, I get for the sake of playing with friends. But if you want to be competitive. You don't want to cross platform that kind of thing. Oh no, they've done stuff. I mean, when it comes to ma- like uh, point and click mouse first person shooter compared to like console first person, like it's not even close. I remember they did a study, like a, I don't Game Pro magazine, one of those magazines, and they had like top Call of Duty players, like the people are the best of the best, and they had to play on console, and they played like a bunch of just like editors and stuff who had the computers, and they matched them up together. And the and the just the editors because they had the point and click and the ease of it actually uh, you know took care of business and that I mean and it wasn't even a matter of talent it's a matter of just point and click shooting on a on a first person shooter so much easier than using a controller right so things like that I'd be scared about um, doing cross platform where the, where there's like a you know something any, any kind of competitive game you kind of want to stay on that's why the couple things I read it looked like. The cross platform, maybe for some games, is something they could do, but I think that's that they would do that by like a game, you know, per game basis. It's possible, or maybe they maybe if they do it cross platform with maybe they do like uh, you know they have you playing Call of Duty, let's say, and they have oh here's a you could play in this room, which is all PC. This room's all Xbox. Yeah, 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 like server based or something. Here's my question to you two. I looked this up because when I saw, I think that's going to be eighty bucks for a customizable controller. Uh, I think yeah. the regular, I think the regular one's sixty. Would you pay an extra twenty bucks to be able to change the color of no, your controller? Not at all. Uh, I think also, sixty bucks for a controller is I, crazy. I may have, I may have muted myself during that entire opening on the controller thing, so that'll be oh, nice. some nice dead air we'll have when we go to Jesus just, Christ. Just total. I may have not clicked it. I don't know. Uh, I blame the Cavs' uh, good run here on that. So, I know I'm uh, watching. I'm watching. But uh, if you missed it, I'm just gonna I'm gonna recap real quick. Xbox released the ability to make new co- new controller color combinations, and you can get your gamer tag and stuff on there. But to to say to to your point, Haddix, no, I would not spend eighty bucks on a custom controller. I hate even spending sixty dollars on a controller. I was about to say, yeah, uh, especially if and, you're playing like that, just makes you not want to bring your friends over to go play video games. Like if you're gonna say like, oh yeah, come on over, the three of you. Hold on, let me go drop two hundred forty dollars so I can get four controllers. Yeah, it's nuts. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then you know, I guess if you're like maybe a streamer or like you're going to tournaments or something, it would be a different story. Like then you'd you'd want to have your own custom one and be kind of kind of cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, no, I don't. I don't really care. It it was when I first heard it, I thought, oh, like they're gonna like you can adjust, you can put where your buttons combinations are, you can you know adjust like that, put analog sticks where you want. Like that would have been intriguing to me. Uh, not the color combinations. Yeah, I mean, I this is do. that's like, I don't know, just some just some kids. If, if that if that was considered like a like a big news thing, I I would be disappointed. Like that's that to me is a like, oh by the way, we are giving Yeah, I think it was it just is. A, that's fair. Yeah. That's absolutely fair. Um but that's uh, the two big games that were announced for them is Gears of War 4, I believe, and the new Halo game. Uh I don't think any of us are Xbox players, so there's not really a whole lot we can talk about with this one. You know, uh, I want to I wanted to bring something up real quick. I don't know if you guys watched um did you watch any clips from the e you know the e three coverage of this at all, or did you guys just kind of read up on it? Uh, it depends. Certain things I did, well, other things I did not. Let me ask the you. I guess this, I saw. I guess this is the better question. Did anyone see? Uh, I think it was the first gameplay of Final Fantasy fifteen on the Xbox. That that video. I did not see the Final Fantasy fifteen for Xbox. So <laughs> this this for some reason cracked me up. The the gentleman who played, I think he has something to do with the creating the game. I can't remember his name. Um, he was just showing kind of how fluid the battle is, which the game looked awesome. I mean, it's looked awesome. Every video I've seen of it, uh, it looked great on the Xbox. He was showing a part of the game where you fight Titan, and I don't know a lot about the storyline of, of fifteen, but. 
maybe this was the point of this battle. You know, how some fights and games, it's kind of like a just stay alive. Like you're not going to kill the guy. You just got to stay alive for a little while. Right. Uh, right. It might have been like that. But this dude, <laughs> this dude was trying to show off the gameplay and literally was getting his ass kicked the whole time. Like, <laughs> like the I did dude see the scene of, of Titan, like who's like halfway across the world, it seemed like. And the dude threw like a giant rock that like destroyed half the like continent. Yeah, it, yeah, and I'm not, again, I'm not sure exactly, like, this was literally a brief little battle, so I'm not sure the whole storyline, he's a, he's like this big old dude, takes up your whole screen, and he, like, swipes his arm across the screen, titan. yeah, exactly, and I, in my head, I'm like, alright, you know, you jump over his arm, or you do this, and the dude was literally getting hit by everything, and I was like, this guy sucks at playing this game, like, <laughs> you would think, like, just made me laugh. there's, there's, uh, when it comes to those demos, if you have, like, a scripted demo, some people get upset about that because then they can't see all the different, you know, facets. You can, that, like, yeah. the, but at the same time, like you should be at least uh, comfortable enough to not like be a noob. Like there was another game where the guy was like, I forget which game it was, and basically was dying the entire like died in like three seconds. It might have been Zelda or something. They like fell on a cliff off a cliff like, right <laughs> start out. So it's like total embarrassing to do. Yeah, that. seriously. Especially Bad. if that's like your one job is, you know, you either develop this game and now you know everything, the insides and outs of this game, but you can't play it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, entertaining to say the least. Uh, but we'll, enough about Microsoft. Uh, we'll talk now. We've got, uh, Sony left. And again, closer to Nintendo, Sony's big thing here wasn't, uh, a focus on hardware it was a focus on games and i will say i said no not hardware technically there was some hardware they announced that they have their their sony vr which is gonna be a virtual reality uh and they're launching with 50 titles when that comes out which how despite whatever you want to say launching with 50 titles in any new type of platform is fantastic like that's yeah i was blown away by that, that that's aspect. great foresight you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. Um, That's the opposite of Nintendo. Right. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and uh, so let's talk about that. What, what? Just the virtual reality in general. Some of the titles that, that they're going to uh, – that some of the big names, I guess, is Resident Evil 7 will be able uh, – in virtual reality, Star Wars, Star Trek, Final Fantasy 15, and then uh, Haddix, I'll let you talk first. Uh, there's going to be a Batman Arkham game. In virtual reality, I want. I wanted to get your opinion Dude, on that. Uh, I would love to. What's it? I can't remember. What's the VR getting sold for? Like, I think three ninety nine. I'll so say that's basically. What I was the, say, it's like basically buying. The, you have to buy the PS four, and then you have to buy like another buy, PS four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it wasn't, dude, I think that's gonna be so badass, man. I. I saw some videos for the gameplay, and, and like we were talking about before we logged on here, it's kind of hard sometimes to really tell the difference between. I feel like virtual reality, you gotta play virtual reality to, to really appreciate it. You know, the gameplay looks great just like everything else. You know what I mean? So it, I, I do think though, I do think that that's gonna be a, a fantastic game. <laughs> my, my, if it wasn't a $400 attachment to an already expensive system, I, I'd probably get it. Like I already have the PS4. So, I mean, what's another $400, I guess, is the ridiculous question I just asked. Um, and also, it's just VR is one of those things where I'm glad it's coming out. I'm glad it's being more streamlined now. It, to me, it's a lot like the smartwatch where if you've got, like, one person that's trying to do it, it's almost like, yeah, we'll just wait until the, the, the company we like does it. And because, I mean, VR has been out for a little bit. I mean, Samsung's I mean, been Virtual doing Boy it. Virtual Boy came out in like, what, 94 or something like that? <laughs> Dude, best that tennis was, game ever. Uh, that was there. But, you know, I agree. And to be honest, I think I'm going to bite the bullet and buy both the PS4 and the VR. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they drop the price on PS4 when this actually comes out. You know, maybe 100 bucks or something uh, just to try to spark people to buy the virtual reality, you know, or what maybe I mean? they so, do a combo pack or something. Yeah, exactly. Together, yeah. You can save some money. Uh, for me, while well, the Arkham game, I love the Arkham games and Rocksteady's making this one again. So they've just made good games in general. Like I've loved all those Batman games. Uh, 
I'll, I'll definitely get that for this. Uh, Final Fantasy 15 to me isn't the type of game I would play in virtual reality. Uh, so I mean, I'm is not, it the same game? It does, or is it, or is it a virtual reality like kind of spinoff? I don't know. I mean, if it's different, then I'll fucking probably buy both because I'm just uh, <laughs> I am a Final Fantasy fanboy. Uh, but for me, the game I'm most intrigued with, while well, like Star Wars, like Rogue Squadron or whatever they're calling it, X Wing something or another, would be fun. Resident Evil 7, to me, would be amazing uh, oh, in first God, person. Yeah. Uh, it'd be scary, would, too. No, it'd be, it'd be total scary. Like, I'll yeah. probably be screaming and stuff. Like, a Well, that, 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 game, that game screams virtual reality just for the sake of, like, having to 360. Screams having as much to kind as we of, will, playing it. I'll say it screams as much as Kaiser, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the whole idea of, like, having to watch your, you know, watch your back. And, you know, when, you, when you're playing... I play at least three or four of the, of the Resident Evils, and they're... And, you know, they have their suspenseful moments, but... You're seeing all of it unfold on on in front of you, whereas I feel like VR just takes that to another level oh, of God, yeah. creepiness. That now you have to just constantly feel like you're really being attacked by zombies. It's I think it's pretty cool. Now that said, I watched about a nine or ten minute um, video uh, where they're demoing it, and it was like it was like some bloggers or something like that. Um, probably one of those like tech blogs like i i you know all those deep internet websites i like to find for our podcast uh but the the girl playing it said she's she's played vr games before and has never had any issues or anything like that she said playing the resident evil one in that 10 minute clip three times she had to like take the goggles like the whatever you want to call it, the headset kind of like flipped them up a little bit had to look down because she was getting nauseous and she said it wasn't like that for other games, and she said other people there, some of them were experienced that. She goes, it could very well, I didn't eat lunch yet. It could have been, you know, a number of things. Uh, I guess it's 60 FPS where, like, a lot of these other, like, Oculus and stuff are, like, 80 or 90 FPS is the minimum. So there could be other factors in there. Uh, but it will be very interesting uh, to see. And, I mean, I would – I don't tend to get sick very easily. But I would I would be all about uh, playing some Resident Evil on this. Is there? Let me ask you guys this on the, on the topic of virtual reality. Is this this kind of alludes back to uh, an uh, Hoagie playing Zelda at RPG a thon with the uh, with the uh, um, the motion capability the of the Wii, and he would just sit there and like flick his wrist. <laughs> is is there <laughs> is there a point where like? You don't want to exert that much effort playing a game. Like, well, to be fair, the virtual reality, you're not, it's not like you're strapped into gloves and everything like that. The virtual reality is like, it's just how you're viewing the game. You're still using a controller when you're playing. Yeah. I mean, it's that, you know, you have the helmet on and you can like say, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I know you're not like walking around and stuff like that, obviously, because you'd run a room. But like, I feel like there's a part, as cool as that is and as, you know, as much as I would want to even get it myself, like at some sometimes you just want to like sit there and not and just kind of you know play an old school game. You know what and I that's mean? That's what's going on too. Like, yeah, is the is the VR going to be like you got to be standing and like constantly turning no, around? They were, sit, they were sitting down for it. I got you. Okay. Yeah, they're just sitting on the couch. Just move. you basically you're you're looking side to side, or, you know, around in a circle, that kind of thing, up and down, and. It's just that's how you control the camera. And that was the other thing she thought maybe was causing it is she was still using the right analog stick because, like, that's what gamers are used to using for, for turning. She was using that while she was on it, and she was wondering if they were counterbalancing each other and it was, like, throwing off her, like, oh, yeah, yeah. her sense of uh, mobility or stability or whatever. Uh, but it's it's definitely interesting. Um, I don't know uh, – is there any other titles that I didn't mention or, or did you want to further elaborate on that either of you heard for the virtual reality that sounds uh, intriguing to you? As far as virtual reality goes, and I think you got the, the big ones, uh, to me anyway. Uh, so two of the other big titles that, that Sony showed, because that was basically Sony, they have the Neo is their next generation, but they didn't, again, like Nintendo, didn't even bring it to the show. Uh, that was not their focus. They were focused all completely on all the new games and stuff. Uh, but the two big titles, other ones, is a new God of War and uh, a Spider-Man game. And I don't, have, did either of you guys watch the trailers for one or both of those games? Uh, I watched them for both. I watched the God of War one. 
Did either of you play God of War? I did at the apartment. I was saying, it's a Haddix played it for RBG a thon. Okay, so yeah. the, the Haddix, this is one you can actually talk about then, dude. Here we go. Let's, 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 let's get your input. Uh, first off, well, I feel like every game looks better, like just looks awesome. You know what I mean? Like the, the games on these consoles look awesome. Well, so, coming uh, from a guy who hasn't owned a system since the Super Nintendo, I'm going to guess that everything looks better than what you I mean, dude, you, you know, the, the 16-bit stuff, man, that's old school. So this shit looks real good. Uh, I did, you know, the the trailer looks awesome. The gameplay looked awesome. Uh, apparently, they're adding some RPG elements into the game. There's like uh, some ex- uh, expertise point. I can't remember exactly what they called it. I can't remember. But there, there, there'll be instead of just an action game, which like it, which is what it was for the PS3 when I played it. Uh, you know, just smashing triangle basically. There's some, there's some RPG elements to it. Um, there continuing the story a lot of people thought they were going to start over in a sense because it's right. just called god of war but that's just what they decided to call it uh, yeah i mean they have kratos is back he's got a yeah, yeah, and his son he's like an old man what do you think about the sun i mean that was probably one of the big things i think it's gonna be interesting i i i didn't play all three god of wars so i'm not sure where it left off in three um but I did see something where there's parts of the game where you actually play the sun for a little while and then go back to playing uh, I would, Kratos and stuff. I, so. I completely believe that. And I, I wouldn't be surprised because you were talking about how like they thought they were going to reboot it. I wonder if this is their way, like if he Kratos dies at the end of this or something. Yeah, like, and you're going to be his a son. son basically. would be like yeah, the next yeah, yeah. legacy. Kyle, any thoughts? I have literally... Uh, the only time I ever saw any gameplay other than seeing it on like YouTube or whatever was when Haddix played it years ago. So not, no, not really. I've, I've never really been into those, those types of games, I guess. Um, I only just started playing like Uncharted, which is not God, you know, you know, God of War, but it's, you know, it's kind of has like that more like adventure, adventure sort of yeah. style. Yeah. Uh, how about Spider-Man? Uh, Kyle, if you don't have any input on Spider-Man, I'll I'll, I'll give my two cents. But I just since go ahead. Didn't know. Uh, so for for me, this felt I played those Arkham games except for the newest one because I don't have a PS4 at this point. But to me, this feels like an Arkham game, the the Arkham style, sort of that Assassin's Creed style uh, game, but with Spider-Man in his environment with his abilities, and uh. I think it looks fun. Like, I mean, that's that to me is cool. Like, uh, it's been a long time since we've had a good Spider-Man game. I think and, PlayStation uh, Two. Yeah, right. And that yeah. that one was like amazing. People still yeah. talk about it. And this, in order to have that ability to like, you know, swing swing around around the city, you know, kind of get immersed in there. I think it's uh, I think it should be a fun game. Dude, it's funny that you equated that to um the Arkham games because it's exactly when I watched it. I thought this this is the Arkham games, the Batman Arkham games in the Marvel universe. It's like a little bit brighter, not as dark, obviously, like a brighter, uh, you know, not I don't want to say kid game, but a game that you would let your ten year old play. You know what I mean? Not that you wouldn't let them play right. Arkham or anything, but it just it, it's, it's not a, as dark more as more family Batman. friendly. It's probably yeah, going to exactly. have some light humor in it if they do yeah. Spider Man crap. But definitely, definitely add that feel to it. Definitely add that feel. It's funny that you said that. So I mean that's that's sort of the the you know Sony's big things that they did the VR thing is is going to be interesting going forward, but uh, well Kyle I'll talk with you you had some opinions on E3 in general what are what are your what are your opinions did you think there's a winner um, and what are your other thoughts uh, on E3 in general. I feel like E3 is not the same as it was 10 years ago. I think that with so many different social mediums or social media mediums out there that, um, that these companies use to, I guess, announce, give announcements. Nintendo does their Nintendo directs. Uh, Sony does a lot of stuff through their website and their YouTube, uh, links. Microsoft, uh, has a lot of, uh, you know, different ways that they share a lot of their stuff. So there, a lot of things are not under wraps when it comes to, when, when we go to E3, uh, a lot of the things that we, that we saw were things we were expecting to see and things that we were already saw were leaked. You know, we're in a, we're in a society now where really the, the E3 convention is, uh, I don't know. It just, it doesn't have as much of the flair 
that it used to have. Um, it's still fun to, to, to look at, but I just think the, the spectacle itself has kind of lost a little bit of its luster. Uh, as far as a winner, uh, I think the problem with picking the winner is that all three of them excelled at what they wanted to show off. So to me, Sony was content based, showed a ton of, a ton of titles with no release dates. So a lot of people can just say that's smoke and mirrors that, you know, like because there's no release dates, it's a lot of just wait and see, uh, a lot of teasing. So that's, but that, that's all well and good. Sony or, uh, Microsoft shares, you know, the hardware side of things. And I think they were more innovative. I think that what they want to do and what they're sharing right now, what they shared at E3 are things that no one else is doing. Um, or at least the very, the very least they're giving more information and more release dates for that matter. Um, for their products. Uh, so I think there's more to be excited about because you have a better feeling. You, you feel like it's actually going to happen. Um, and, but then you have Nintendo who is probably going to have the, the possibility of having a game of the decade. So if I, if you put a gun to my head, I would say the winner was Microsoft just because the play anywhere, the, the PC rig powered Scorpio, um, and then, and then just a couple of their, you know, releases for their games, um, that they've showed have all looked great. So I think, I think just from an overall standpoint, I'd actually would give it to Microsoft. But then, uh, I, I feel like Nintendo will reap the benefits the most once everything comes full circle. Uh, it's interesting. I, I would, I would agree that I don't know if there's a clear cut winner. I would say, and they all did what they were supposed to do while I think, but I would still put Nintendo as like a distant third because they just didn't show as much to me. Now what they showed, I, uh, Zelda looks fantastic. And I think like, what they showed has given the most amazing. headlines. That's what I, that's all I was saying. Like uh, Zelda itself has been the top that's fair. headline. That's for fair. Three. They're going to get to develop a lot of chatter, but, um, I, other than, but it's for one game. I mean, they're not going to, they're not going to, be able to bank the future on the company off of one game. But um, I would probably give the edge to Microsoft for, for the hardware, but we'll see if they can live up to their promises. Uh, you were talking about release dates. Uh, Sony did say that the VR is coming out in October, so you would assume all those titles are coming out in October as well, at least all the VR titles. Because it's uh, launching with them. so Right. So that yeah. would be just the, the assumption there. Uh, my one other point, I, I kind of agree with your, your concept, though, on the... Uh, you know, a lot of with social media and stuff. I mean, there's, I don't think, I think they're, what they released or show at E3 would be different 10 years ago than it would have been now. Like, I think Nintendo would have showed NX or talked about it or something. Because, but they're like, we don't need to right now. We don't have enough. We're not going to. We can always do a uh, discussion on, you know, on a, a website blog or a stream or their website or you know, they can tweet it out or something like that. I mean, they can, there's so many more options down the line. Well, a lot of those um, companies too just have their own, their own conventions sometimes sure. too. So right. like, Absolutely. they're not going to waste the big, huge announcements anymore with E3 like they may have done 10 years ago. Yep. I agree completely. Uh, one other point I wanted to make is, uh, the South, the new South Park game is coming out. Hoagie, you and, you and I both played, uh, Stick of Truth. Uh, I'm pretty excited for it, the new one. I mean, it's, I don't think the, you know, the combat looks improved from the last one. Uh, but I mean, the, the comment before was kind of just boring. I'm just excited to see what they do. I thought the first one was a, was a surprise success, and I think this one could be very good as well. I've spent fifty dollars on on things that I've had less game or less time playing. So let's put it that way. Yeah, no, it was for fifty dollars. Uh, I got every bit of it out of that game as far as just just sheer enjoyment. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's a it's a it's a game that has completely dated mechanics i mean no no no, i don't think uh the south park studios was trying to you know shock anybody with their ability to make a game but it was it was really it was a fantastic south park game yeah i agree uh haddix how about you thoughts on e3 overall anything we didn't talk about uh i'll keep it brief i do agree with you on the fact that i think uh nintendo is third just because of the quantity of stuff that they presented. Cause I feel like as fans, you go in wanting to just see a bunch of shit. Um, 
I honestly think as far as E3 goes, Sony won just because they showed so many titles, so many games that people want to see. VR has got a date that it's coming out for sure. But I do think Microsoft won as far as the long run goes. I think with, with presenting the console and all that kind of stuff, they'll end up making more money in the next year by the time the year is over. That'll be interesting uh, to say the least. So, um, yeah. I mean, I picked Xbox, but for what it's worth, Sony's gonna, Sony sold me on VR. Like that's yeah. likely I'm going to be dropping a thousand dollars between the system, the game, the games and, uh, the VR setup. So con- congratulations, Sony. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So that's, that's our show. Uh, I'm still getting distracted watching this Cavs game. But, I know, me uh, too. <laughs> Hopefully the they come anyways? out. I'm, I haven't watched any of it yet. They are currently up forty six to twenty nine. Uh, Jesus. Yeah, uh, but they've actually been blowing it. it uh, Igodala looks like he's got a little bit of a cramp or something going on. I've got it muted, so it's just kind of watching body language and things. Gotcha. Uh, I think Curry's got two or three fouls. Kevin Love has three fouls. So there's there's some interest there. Um, but we'll see. It's still early. Six and a half to go in the second quarter. Uh, coming up next week uh, we're going to review the Warcraft movie which has dominated sales in China Uh, not so much in the US but we're going to review, talk about it uh, discuss what we liked, didn't like uh, all that kind of stuff so if you're interested in that and you haven't seen it yet go see it Uh, from the setting of the ever popular Leather Goddesses of Phobos to the environment known as Zach McCracken between time and space. I am Josh Kaiser. He is Josh Haddock and he is Kyle Hoagland and we will see you guys next week. I don't know what any of that is, but have a good Friday. What? See Old school PC games. Word. See ya. <laughs>